Go ahead and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much that you've allowed us to have a day to come together to uh, worship you and to be encouraged through your word. And Father, thank you for our service we've already had throughout our day here for your word that has been given. Help us to continue to meditate upon it. We might learn more of you, but also continue to help us to keep our hearts and minds open. We might truly be able to worship you in the furthest of our services here and continue to be encouraged and strengthened through your word. We do ask that you bless each one of the prayer requests they mentioned up here tonight and those that are not spoken but that lay upon our hearts. Father, we have so many that are still sick, uh, fighting, battling through different diseases, illnesses, injuries, following healing, give them back their strength. Lord, do be with those that have lost loved ones and comfort them. Lord, do continue to be with this nation, to guide our leaders, help them know how to lead the nation in a way that is honoring to you, that this nation might turn to 
and seek you. Lord, you forgive us of our sins and of our shortcomings. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today. Number 262. 262.
Bibles, you can be turning to uh, Hebrews chapter 1. We prepare to read our uh, text that we've been looking at for the last uh, few weeks as we've been talking about uh, ways that God has revealed himself and is continuing to reveal himself uh, to us today. And we're going to continue uh, looking at a few more things this evening. Uh, our verses, as we've looked, it says in Hebrews 1 and verse 1, it says, God in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who made the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. God has chosen to reveal and to make himself known unto sinful man. He has done it for the very first time, that God, from the very beginning, when God made Adam, the very first time that Adam see it, God has appeared and made known and revealed his will, uh, his uh, word to us, uh, to men, to those who he wants to follow him. As a matter of fact, we've already seen God has spoken at different times in different ways. He used an intermediary. Uh, in the past, when dealing with the fathers, he dealt with the fathers through the prophets. He revealed himself to the fathers half by the means of the prophets. He would speak to the prophets in different ways, and the prophets would speak that message to the people. Uh, very similar to the way that we do it today, uh, God's word is revealed. Now that we make it known and, and share, uh, proclaim the word that's already been given. But today we stand in a time of complete revelation as God has now spoken to us plainly, finally, and completely. Through his son. God's process of revelation, uh, as we've looked at, uh, is really needs to be understood in the light uh, of Scripture and how that Scripture has been given unto us. The pre scriptural period leading up from uh, Adam all the way to the tenure of Moses, when Moses first began to write those first uh, books of the Word of God. And uh, as a pre scripture, there was no written Word of God, so God. Uh, would speak to and address the patriarchs, Abraham and uh, Noah, those individuals in slightly different ways. And he did during the next phase, which was a progressive scriptural revelation as the scriptures were beginning to be written down. And as the word of God was penned and his word was written and revealed, and of course today we live in a time of complete, of perfect revelation where that all that God needs us to know, all that we are required to know, is contained in and confined into the pages of the Word of God. They are known through Christ. The Word of God speaks through Christ. We live in a period of complete uh, scriptural revelation. Uh, we've already seen that in the past that God did at times speak through dreams. Uh, he appeared uh, at times in dreams to individuals. He built his will uh, unto to them, uh, whether that was... <clears throat> Bimelech or Laban or Jacob, he did that at times. We also saw that that was something that greatly diminished as the scripture was revealed it was used less and less. And God no longer deals with and uh, reveals himself through dreams at this particular juncture in time. You and I are not going to see great. We need to seek divine scripture. We need to seek the divine commandments that are revealed and that are spoken to us, not by verbal uh, words, but through the word of God. It's contained within the book, within the pages of Scripture. Last week we looked a little bit at visions. We're going to kind of pick up where we left off with that subject. And that's the idea of how only God used visions uh, and visitations uh, to reveal himself at times in the Old Testament uh, dispensation. Again, uh, this was something that was used especially uh, during your uh, progressive Scripture time frame. There are many times in the Old Testament scriptures which you will find that God would give visions uh, unto the individuals, unto people, that would reveal to them certain things that either they needed to do, certain aspects of the Word of God, uh, and at times simply simple, uh, confirmations. 
Uh, if, for example, in Genesis 15, when God appeared to Abraham and they were confirming, ratifying that covenant there, God's uh, Moses, right name right here, uh, Abraham uh, would see the vision of that uh, burning pot that would pass through the pieces of animals that were there, that symbolized God's uh, ratifying that covenant and taking full responsibility upon himself. That's a vision. Uh, it wasn't uh, that Abraham was given. Now, visions at times one of those things that uh, throughout the Old Testament tenure, you'll find all kinds of visions, especially in your prophetic books. Uh, God gave a lot of prophets a great many visions. Uh, he, uh, Louis to the Meyer prophets like Zechariah, and you'll find all kinds of visions that God gave to them. They were uh, given the opportunity to see, uh, to behold uh, certain things, and then God would explain it to them. Or in Daniel's case, sometimes he would sit there and ponder and wonder and then pray and then God would send the understanding. But visions, just like with dreams, were never things that were intended uh, to be mystical things that, well, you just never really understood them. You can know them. Uh, God has always intended his revelation to be specific, uh, to be precise, and to be clear. Uh, what good does it do to reveal uh, God's word if you can't understand God's word. What good does it do to reveal and to make oneself know if you can't understand the revelation? That seems so explanatory, but that's very important to understand when you start thinking of Old Testament visions and visitations, because unlike in modern day times, men might claim to have visions and dreams and things of that nature that are left to uh, open interpretation, that are left to be interpreted and, and viewed in where, where they seem proper. God never did that. Uh, visions in the Word of God were always given, and either they were just like the dreams. They were either self-explanatory, or they were given in interpretation. Because God's desire was not to mystify or to bewilder. God's intention was to make known. God wants us to understand Him and to understand His will and to understand His plan. He always he may reveal it in different ways. And honestly, some of those Old Testament visitations, uh, visions that the prophets received were pretty memorable at times. But they were always explained and made certain and made sure. Uh, visions uh, and visitations. Now, uh, visitations are perhaps one of the more common things we like to think of Old Testament times. That is, when God himself, whether literally the Lord, uh, or the angel of the Lord sometimes we're called, would actually stand and visit and commune with people. We talked about Joshua last week, and when the angel uh, of the Lord appeared to him, that was Christ, the captain of the armies of the Lord of Hosts. But the visions, uh, visitations that were often given, uh, perhaps the ones that come to mind the most often would be uh, obviously, uh, Isaiah 6, when uh, Isaiah was in the temple, uh, and then he saw uh, the glory of the Lord there. Uh, but the other two that come to mind, there's more than this, uh, were the dramatic ones. That's uh, Ezekiel chapters 1 and 2, and then Daniel 7, uh, were the three major ones that I think of and probably present to us the best picture of what those visitations could have been. You know, those are the, uh, what I think of in the dramatic sense. Here's a, a prophet who is. Uh, standing there, going about their uh, daily business, uh, serving in the temple, or in Ezekiel's case, he was simply attending his, his duties, his life by the river, and then he saw the vision of this angelic uh, chariot, and the angels, the wheels that were all around it. And in Ezekiel's case, we were told that he was uh, standing there, Ezekiel 1 24, it says, When they went, or the noise of the wing, like the noise of great waters. As the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of a host. When they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice of the fervent that was over their heads. When they stood and had let down their wings, the fervent that was over their heads, the lightness of the throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the lightness of the throne was the lightness as the appearance of a man above and upon it. I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire around the mountain lit, the appearance of his loins even upward. I put it and for the appearance of his loins, he went downward. I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about it. And the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the lightness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that said, 
course, you can back up and get more description of the angels that were given there. This was a, a very uh, large, very dramatic uh, vision that Ezekiel has seen here. He's now literally seeing the throne of God, and he sees this uh, glory, he hears this voice, and as he sees it, he then it says in verse 38 that he, he falls on his face, and he hears the voice of one uh, that speaks. Uh, in all honesty, this is a type of visitation, this is a type of thing that we all uh, would love to have at times. Uh, an instance where we're just sitting there and just, uh, God appears to us, and, he's, and it's obviously it's God, it's clear that it's God, and he, he speaks, he makes himself known to us, he reveals to us things. What a, a dramatic experience that that would truly uh, turn out to be. Uh, but as is often as is the case with dreams, it's always with visions. God doesn't appear this way anymore. Uh, you and I are not going to get to a point in our lives when we reach X level of holiness and God's going to appear to us in this great dramatic vision that we see and when we behold his throne. Not going to happen that way. Uh, not every Old Testament prophet got a glimpse of the throne of God. Not every Old Testament saint got a vision of the Lord and of the Lord's will. Not every apostle in the New Testament was given the vision and revelation. Not every New Testament child of God was allowed to see what John saw. We're all allowed to read it and know what he saw, but only one man got to experience that, and that was uh, the apostle John. While he was in exile on the island of Patmos. And so yes, God did at times appear in visions and visitations to individuals, and he, he clearly made himself known and revealed uh, unto them. And they made his will and he made his will known unto them. There are also instances though when God appeared and he uh, visited individuals that it was not quite so dramatic and it wasn't quite so uh, vivid of a depiction. At times God would appear in such simple things as a bush that was burning that was never uh, consumed. Uh, Moses, it says that God, uh, the angel of the Lord, spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. That's the story we speak uh, so often of. But what do you think? God is appearing, he's visiting Moses out of the bush. <laughs> That's not the throne of God, but that was still a sight to behold. Because even Moses had to stop and look and, and wonder what it was. And God spoke to him and said, You remove your shoes, you're on holy ground. He was appearing to, to Moses, not in his throne of glory and radiance, but he appeared to him simply there in the burning bush. Now, of course, Moses will be uh, very blessed with his life because that's not the only time that God's going to speak to him because later on through Mount Sinai and other things, he'll have more uh, personal encounters and conversations and visits of the glory of God than really anyone since probably Adam and Seth. Uh, when you think about all the time that he spent there on Mount Sinai, but yet... In the beginning was just in a simple uh, burning bush. Matter of fact, most of the Old Testament prophets, we don't even know exactly how that God spoke to them. You ever thought about that? How many times does it simply say that the word of the Lord came to the prophet Jonah? How did that happen? It, well, was, it, was it a vision? Was it a dream? Did you see a throne? Did it, you know, uh, well, how, how did that happen? I don't know. You know why we don't know? It doesn't matter. The way that God gave the message wasn't as important. It had so much no long term meaning. What was important was the message that God gave. That's why the predominant message throughout the Old Testament, especially the prophetic books, most of the prophets, we don't know. All we know is the word of the Lord came to them. They obeyed and they went and they preached the word of God. They're prophets. God spoke to them. Whatever it means that God saw necessary at the time, they took that message from God and they went and they proclaimed it. Now, in Jonah's case, it took a little bit of convincing, and Jonah did his best to not have to go, but eventually he ended up going uh, and declaring and making known the word of God. So what's vital to understand and to glean from that is that visions and visitations were never intended to be uh, something that everyone was to experience, a primary means for everyone to come to know the Lord. And even in the days of the prophets, they were secondary to the message. And what was more important, the way the message came to the prophet or the message the prophet had? The answer is always the message. 
It was never about these things. Now, in instances of like Isaiah and Ezekiel, we're given glimpses of the glory of God because it teaches us and it shows to us uh, more about who God is and what He's doing, those reasons for those things. But even still, the message is what stands supreme. The Word of God, the message of God, is always more important than the means by which it was made. God is speaking. He's making and revealing Himself unto us. Yes, at times God spoke in different ways. And perhaps in certain instances He used certain means like dreams to, to get people's attention. So they would listen to what He was trying to tell them or confirm things to them. But ultimately, it was the message that needed to be given. Uh, visions and meditations were probably one of the most common, actually is really the most common way that God revealed his message to the Old Testament prophets. You go back to that formula of Hebrews chapter 1, when it says that God revealed himself to the fathers how? Through the prophets. Even more often than dreams, God appeared in visitations and visions of the prophets, and then they conveyed that message unto the people. But just like with dreams, visions are no longer uh, in play uh, today. Uh, men no longer receive visions from the Lord, and nor does the Lord visit them in the special type of manifestations that we see depicted, like with the burning bush, or with the, the throne of God uh, appearing before them, like with Ezekiel. Those types of things do not happen, nor do they occur. There are many reasons and many ways that we know that, uh, to be certain. Uh, you can see very clearly that many of those who claim to have such experiences uh, generally do not depict anything nearly uh, even remotely uh, scriptural at times. They're ba- they are way off base. Everyone who came face to face with the glory of God fell on their feet in worship and adoration, not boastful pride and arrogance. Visions serve their purpose. But today we have something far better than visions. We have something far better than those things. We no longer need a vision because we have the completed word here. Think for just a moment and and realize how blessed it is today to know that you and I have the completed written word within our hands. Could you imagine for just a moment what it would have been like to be an Israelite during the Old Testament time frame? Well, chances are you could barely afford to have a, a page of Scripture, let alone have an entire book of the Old Testament. Uh, it's why you had to, to, to memorize. It's why the Hebrew children go ahead and memorize Scripture. was because that's the only sure far way you had it. They wanted to have it within their presence. You know, they were commanded to write Scriptures on varying places in their home, but to have the complete uh, Scripture, they, they didn't have that. Even in New Testament times, uh, in the Old Testament period, that was something they didn't have widely available. You and I are extremely blessed today to be able to have not just pieces and portions, but we have the completed uh, Word of God within our hands. You and I don't have to say, well, I need to know what the Lord says about this, so I'm going to have to go see the prophet, who may be, you know, 40, 50 miles away. I, gotta walk, you know, I may have to walk, you know, uh, four days just to get to a prophet to hear the word of God. You and I can just simply pick up uh, the book of the word of God and we can read and find out what God said. And we can pray to the Lord and ask ourselves, what uh, do I need to do in these particular situations? Uh, to, uh, to, to believe and to get to a point that we seek to have these new greater visions and visitations from the Lord is to lessen uh, the value and the importance of the revealed scripture that we have. You see, the thing is, ultimately, that if God is still revealing himself in visions, and if he is still giving visitations to individuals, then you and I need to be very diligent to find them as you understand them. Because if God is still revealing himself in that way, I don't know about you, but how do you know what God said? The fact of the is that God does it. And his word clearly reveals and makes that known to us. Not only do they lessen the value and the importance of the revealed scripture, but they also lessen to us the very important uh, understanding that we should have of what our relationship with the Lord is. When you and I are told or get to the point that we think that we need to spend all of our time praying, Seeking 
hoping that maybe at some point in time, uh, God is going to give us some great vision, and He's going to come and visit us. That reveals to us that you really don't understand what you have as a child of God. Because God is already with you, first of all. <laughs> you don't have to, to wonder or seek some kind of vision to know that God is with you, because if you're a child of God, guess what? God's already there. <laughs> the Holy Spirit dwells with you and dwells you, and God is always with you. Hebrews 13 says that God will never leave you nor forsake you. There is nothing that you can do as a child of God to make God leave you. That anybody can do to you to make God leave you. Once you have been redeemed by the blood of Christ, once you are a saved, born again child of God, the Holy Spirit dwells you, and He's there. He's there with you when you're serving the Lord. He's there with you uh, when you're in sin. He's there with you. He is uh, always there. The problem that we have today is not that God is not with us, but the problem that we have today is the fact that we do not long for and take the time necessary to enjoy the presence of the Lord when He is there. God is there. How often do we actually take the time uh, to pray? to read his word, and to truly uh, take the time to enjoy knowing that God is truly there. Uh, the Old Testament saints uh, would have uh, longed for and desired to have the opportunities that you and I have today. Yes, you and I today may have a longing and a desire. As a matter of fact, I believe that every child of God should have, within their hearts, a burning desire and a longing to feel God's presence and to enjoy his presence and to know that he is there and that he's with you. But I also believe that we also need to yield that desire and realize that he is there. And if we don't know that, then we need to get on our knees. Uh, we need to be praying, figuring out what sins are hindering us from seeing and feeling God's presence, and figure out what is wrong in our life. We would take the time to dig into the Word of God and draw ourselves nearer to him. God is with you. And if your relationship with the Lord isn't where it needs to be, fix it. <laughs> He's there. All you have to do is to confess whatever sins are unconfessed and desire and seek to be in fellowship with Him. Seek to engage in that relationship with Him. You, as a child of God, have the Lord with you. Always, no matter what may happen. Yes, to, to seek visions and meditation is to, in many ways, lessen the value and the amazing blessing that you and I have today of knowing that we have not only the completed scriptures that we can possess in our hands uh, with us at all times, but also the fact that, point, that God is always with us. Uh, that no matter where we go, what we do, God's there. And we can enjoy His presence, uh, speak with Him, uh, we can read his word, hear what he's got to say at any time if we'll simply take the time uh, to do so. God has revealed himself in many ways throughout the ages to the prophets, and they made his will known to the people. And you and I today have the best, the complete, the perfect means of knowing the Lord. So we have the word of God that reveals to us Christ, who he is, and what that he has done for you and for me and what he is going to do for you and I as God's children. Yes, God has spoken different times in the past in different ways. Today he has spoken finally, completely, perfectly through his son. And that's what we need to be seeking after. Uh, don't seek some grand level of holiness that brings you special revelations and dreams and visions. Simply seek the Lord through his word of your prayer and enjoy the things that we truly already have. Be word, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for all your wonderful blessings. Thank you for allowing us the ability uh, to be here, Father. Thank you so much for your word. Father, we know that we are the sinful men who by birth and by choice have been, become sinners who are apart from you, out of fellowship, out of relationship with you. Thank you that you love us enough to reveal to us that you have provided salvation through your Son. Thank you that you revealed to us your will, how we are to live our lives in a way that is honored and pleasing to you. If all help us to live our lives yielding to that revelation, yielding to your will, that our lives might truly be honoring of you in everything that we do. Father, thank you so much for your word, the complete truth that presents and gives 
unto us. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Has it good to see everyone that made it out to Thursdays today? Remember, Thursdays is Wednesday night. It will be fellowship, so keep that in mind as well. Any other announcements or anything before we dismiss? Hearing nothing then, if you will stand. And Brother David, you assist us in prayer, please. Thank you again, Lord, for allowing us to stand here this afternoon.